Thailand Complete Travel Guide. In this complete video, we've covered items such as visas, accommodation, cost, as well as where to stay. We've covered medical and insurances. We've covered transportation type. You name it, it's covered in the video. We've also highlighted every chapter in the description below. According to the State Department in 2023, over 9 million Americans live abroad, and that number has drastically increased this year alone. So if you have plans to move to Thailand, this video will tell you all you need to know before relocating to Thailand. Let's go! When I went to Thailand three years ago, I fell madly in love with it. My favorite thing about Thailand is that it brings the Eastern and the Western world so perfectly together. After touring the entire Southeast Asia, I can tell you that Thailand is one of the best places in the world to live. Thailand is the only Southeast Asian country that was never colonized. And surprisingly, it offers so much diversity. I came to realize that Thailand's popularity stems from factors like the stunning beaches in the south, Buddhist monks all around, royal palaces, grand market, and it has such a flexible immigration policy for people who want to move here. Thailand immigration system keeps getting better and better and better. Let's take a look. You have the single entry visa, which gives you 30 days visa on arrival. You can extend it in Thailand for another 30 days. And you can also do a border run, which will give you another 30 days, which gives you a total of three months to be in Thailand on your first visit. There's also another option for a month of a six months. Yes. <laughs> If you're over 50 and you want to stay in Thailand for a longer period of time, a great option is a retirement visa. This visa is pretty easy to get. You have to just be 50 years old with a monthly source of income of approximately US $1,890. This proof of income could come from your retirement pension, social security, even property rental. You have the long-term resident visa, which is relatively new, and it permits you to work in Thailand and stay for up to 10 years. It also gives you multiple entry. And the great side is there's no 90-day reporting. And also, top this, you cannot be double taxed while living in Thailand. And Thailand just keeps getting better with these visa types. They have just landed the Digital Nomad Visa, the DTV Visa. This gives you a five-year multiple entry. What if you don't want to do all this and go through the process of visa application? Check it out. You have the Education Visa. Do you want to learn Thai language? Do you want to do kickboxing for a little bit? Well, you can get an education visa pretty easy, which permits you to stay in Thailand for three months at a time and also permits you to renew it. There is so many visa options here on the website. I have put the link in the description below so that you can click on it and check these visa out for yourself. Now you've landed, your visa is processed. Where do you stay? Don't worry, I got you. In terms of where to stay in Thailand, we have broken this up into two sections for you. In the first section, we show you the best place to stay in terms of accessibility to transportation. Later on in this video, which is highlighted in the chapter below, we have videoed each stop on the transportation lines in each area given description of each area so you will understand back before your arrival. In terms of transportation and easy accessibility to everything you may need. Along the BTS line is my favorite place to stay because the BTS line intersects with all the 
major train and buses you will need to get around. I am a nomad traveler. So I spend two to four months of each year in different countries. I also make a lot of these videos. So if you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. This way you'll be notified when new videos are made. Bangkok has an amazing transportation system. The BTS, which stands for Bangkok Mass Transit System. A single ticket costs 50 cents. $4.43 gets you on restricted travel for one day. Now the BTS SkyTrain operates from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. The MRT operates on a single journey fare. The cost goes from 40% to $1.18, but you can get a day pass for about $3.54. And like the BTS, the MRT operates from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. We now go on to the bus system. Bangkok Mass Transit Authority, also known as the BMTA, is the main operator of the public transit bus. The fare will be collected on the bus by a conductor. The fare varies dependent on the color of the buses. Example, the red buses, no air conditioning, you pay 21 cents. The orange buses, these are air conditioned and you pay 32 to 71 cents. The buses operate daily from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Now the taxis, since most taxis are new and spacious, in addition to the traditional green, yellow, you'll also have red, blue. They also come in some funky colors like bright orange, red, or you'll even see some pink ones. A typical taxi ride would cost you like $1.48. When I'm in Bangkok, I like to take Grab. And with the Grab, I can pay my credit card. Now, Tuk Tuk is fun. Tuk Tuk is a three-wheel motor vehicle. A short Tuk Tuk ride should cost you $1.50 to $4.50. Exercise caution when taking a Tuk Tuk as the fare can vary considerably. Bike taxis, generally used for short trips. They're easy and they're fast, but a little dangerous. The fares start from 60 cents, depending on where you want to go, and you can take a bike taxi from the stand or even use a Grab app. We now come on to the last two modes of public transportation. Now we go by water. So you have the favorite cruise along the clocks, which is the canal boat run on Bangkok's major canal. Fares starts from 41 cents. Most boats run from 5 a.m. to about 7 p.m. And there are no night boats. The other water transportation you have, you can do the Bay Ferry, which is down the Chayo Raya River. You can either buy a one-way ticket for $1.77 or a full-day ticket for $5.90. Most boats run from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m., 10 minutes interval. So, you have so many means of transportation around Bangkok. As a solar traveler, I find Thailand to be very safe. If you're in Thailand and you have any kind of issues, one thing I love is that they have the tourist police. And all you do, you dial 1672 and tourist police, they speak English. So they'll help you with any emergency, whether it be medical or non-medical, if you cannot get through to the hospital. Another good thing about Thailand is that the U.S. Embassy has Thailand as a category of one. This means exercise normal caution. And if you register your email address with the U.S. Embassy and let them know you're in Thailand, they send you alerts in terms of anytime anything is going on or if they're in the area, they do renewal for your passport or notary service. So that's really one of the features that I really love. And the link to them is also in the description below. No matter where you go to, weather is always a concern. In Thailand, there's two weathers, hot or rain. But I find that right through the year, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot, it's just always hot. Thailand uses the Thai solar calendar. 
So it's 2024 now, but in Thailand it's 2567. So you'll see that pop up every now and again. Just don't be alarmed. They do convert it back and forth for you, but their official calendar, it is 2567. As we get more mature in age, medical needs come higher and higher and higher on our list. While on my two and a half year journey in Asia, I had three opportunities to use their medical system. And I have to say, I was immensely impressed. I went to get a physical done and I made the appointment on Monday. I got through to the doctor on Tuesday and guess what? He was on time. Don't even get me started on the level of compassion and care. I use those two words, compassion and care, because the way they treat you and speak to you with such delicacy and emotion, OMG. <laughs> For the completely physical, including all the blood ones, only $175. In Thailand, there is 1,400 hospitals. And Thailand is considered to have some of the most modern hospitals in the world. In order to get private care, it can range you for a doctor's visit from $20 to $90. However, if you are an authorized worker or a Thai resident, you are given free health care. Health insurance is also available in Thailand. In order to be permitted to live in Thailand, we have to show insurance coverage from our original country. And most of the time, those insurance does not cover us in Thailand. Fortunately, in Thailand, there's a significant amount of insurance companies that sell you medical insurance. Another thing that I love about Thailand is for category of two medications, like pain medication, sleep, ADHD, and the list goes on. You do not need a script. You can bring those with you. But if you're there and you need them, you can just go to the pharmacy and you don't need to get a script for that prescription. They'll just sell it to you over the counter. When I'm in Bangkok, I like to go to NP International Dental Clinic. They do a real good deep cleaning there for only $44. If you think you're gonna get bored while being in Thailand, wrong country. There is so much to do in Bangkok alone. I have created a very condensed list of the best things to do while there. Erawan Indu Shrine features a gilded statue of the god Brahma. The shrine has well decorated the four face of Buddha. It is usually very busy here with prayers and dances along the busy intersection by Siam shopping area. Take a trip to Ayutthaya to get a glimpse of the ancient days of Thailand. While there, stop by the reclining Buddha, which is a representation of Buddha just before he passed into the afterlife. A cruise down the Cha Phraya, Bangkok's most important waterway, is the perfect way to introduce yourself to the iconic Bangkok skyline and to catch a glimpse of the daily locals' life. Here, you can view the historic Bangkok landmarks, such as the Emerald Buddha Temple, the Wat Arun, and the Grand Palace. Cruise the Klongs in a long tailboat. Bangkok is known as the Venice of the East, and for a good reason. The city is quite literally webbed with miles of canals or clongs. Get ready to be amazed by the majestic building adorned with colorful glass fragments as you walk inside the former royal complex of the Grand Palace. Jim Thompson was an American businessman who brought Thai skills to the rest of the world in the mid 20th century. His canal side home has been transformed into a museum showcasing his vast collection of arts and antiques. At the ancient city, you'll find life sized replica 
of iconic places around Thailand, including those from the present and olden times, like a floating market and the San Fet Prasad Palace. Songkran Water Festival, which marks the beginning of the traditional Thai New Year. Try as you may, you will get wet. In Bangkok, there are literally markets everywhere. Chatuk Chak Weekend Market. If you like bazaars and outdoor markets, this will be the one that will blow you away. Bangkok's Chinatown is among the largest Chinatowns in the world. And walking through this sprawling neighborhood will have you feeling like you've stepped out of Thailand and onto the streets of Beijing. Mekong Railway Market, a popular picture and travel destination due to the train passing through the market every few hours. You will stop to taste some of Thailand's mini delicious coconut water. The floating market tour. Your trip to Bangkok isn't complete without visiting at least one floating market. Jump from the sellers selling their goods on wooden boats along the canal. Central World is famous for being one of the largest shopping malls in Bangkok. It is a popular destination for both locals and tourists, offering a wide range of shopping, dining, and other entertainments. Fortune Town is home to almost 10,000 vendors. You'll find everything from vintage sneakers to comic books and Thai handcrafts being sold here. Why not try Thai Tattoo, a memorable keepsake? You must have heard about Thai Massage. Okay, maybe all that stuff isn't for you. Take a slice of the green space in Bangkok. The Lumphini Park is over 142 acres. You cannot walk it out. Bangkok streets seem to sizzle at all times of the day with some of the most coveted street foods on the planet. Don't forget to try their drinks. Just to give you an idea as to what the hotels look like with pricing, here is a hotel I stayed at this year when I was in Bangkok. Just to quickly show you an example of a three-star hotel, we got a full-size refrigerator and a separate living area. The room was very clean. We even had a patio with a beautiful view day and night. Let's look into nightly stays. I was there in April of this year and I paid $31 per night. Bearing in mind that the best places to stay is somewhere around the mass transit area. Starting at hotels close to the BKK airport, prices start as low as $26. In central Bangkok, for an okay hotel, which is clean and comfortable, around three stars, you're looking at $30 and up. Let's now look at our monthly stay options. Monthly accommodation starts from $200. For $500, you could get a really okay place to stay in the center of Bangkok. Look at this amazing condo you could rent for $1,300. Buying a condo in Thailand is easiest than I've seen anywhere else in Asia. Here we will be covering the condos, and the rules to buy a condo. Buying a condo in Thailand is pretty easy. Let me quickly show you what you would get in Bangkok for 25,000, 50,000, 75,000, 150,000, at this $300,000 condo. In Thailand, you're not permitted to buy land, but you can lease it for 30 years and build a structure on it. Or you can buy a condo, but the condo cannot have more than 49% non-Thai ownership. You have to be cautious when buying properties in Thailand. Because you have such things as fake land titles, 
where they'll present to you fake titles. You also have off-plan scams where developers sell condos that they know are not going to be developed. Another thing you have to be cautious of is mortgage fraud, where buyers are tricked into signing over their property rights. As in buying real estate in any country, if you are gonna do a transaction, make sure you have correct legal representation. We will now go into the detailed description and videos in terms of the areas there are in Bangkok and the features that's associated with them. Phraganong. This area is a very nice and quiet residential neighborhood known for Wat Dramangkol, which is a 20th century Buddhist temple with a distinct red and gold tower top. The area is quaint with back alleys that are home to eateries, serving home-style Thai, Vietnamese, and Korean cuisine, as well as cozy coffee shops and desert places. Ekame Bangkok and the Thonglo Bangkok stops. The Ekame and Thonglo area is known for its chic cafe, its gourmet restaurants, hip bars, and boutique shopping. It is perfect for the younger expats or those who enjoy the vibrant nightlife and the multicultural vibe. This trendy area is recognized as a hub for Thai celebrities and affluent expats. And why this is my favorite area. From Phong Bangkok. This is a very upscale area. It is known for its luxury mall on the bustling Sukhumvit Road. It also has numerous home decor stores and basic tailor shops. It has a very busy nightlife where revealers enjoy cocktails at hidden peak easies and pack the areas with craft, beer, venues. Definitely popular day and night to be in this area. The Asuk Montre Road or the Sukhumvit 21 is a major road in Bangkok. It is often referred to as simple Bangkok or Asuk. This area contains many offices, buildings, and shops. The Phom Chit area is considered one of Bangkok's busiest area. It is ideal for those looking to live the high life with plenty of luxury condos, restaurants, and malls. It is centrally located and is great for commuters and has a lot of great shopping, beauty, and fitness amenities nearby. The Chit Lom area is a bustling BTS station area, which is located in the heart of Bangkok. This area is connected to the rest of Bangkok to the Chitlam BTS, which provides covered walkway to popular sightseeing and shopping spots. The Siam area is Bangkok's well-known shopping district dominated by huge malls such as the MBK Center, which contains roughly 2,000 shops and restaurants. It is also home of the Sea Alive Bangkok Ocean World Aquarium. You'll find art exhibitions, also find numerous rooftop bars offering sweeping city views. Great place to relax. What to say about this great spot, Chinatown which is the biggest Chinatown in the world. It's somewhat hard to commute from this area. However, Chinatown is a good budget area for Bangkok with a lot of history. Phaya Thai Bangkok. Somewhat harder to commute from this area. However, it is best known for its gigantic malls. It is also home to one of Bangkok's most beautiful museums, the Suan Pakad Palace. And then you have the Central World Bangkok. Central World combines world-class shopping and conference facilities with rooftop dining. It is the ninth largest shopping complex in the world. Location is right in the heart of Chitlam, an area in Bangkok known for its malls with direct access 
to the BTS. Lumvini, Bangkok. Even though it is a little harder to commute from this area, it's the best area to stay in Bangkok for nature and adventure levels. Named after the Lumfini Park, the Lumfini Park is one of Bangkok's few green spaces where you can escape the madness of the great city of angels. If you like this video and you would like to know when another video comes out, Hit the like and subscribe button. This way you will be notified.